us a lot about the science stuff, Professor Dave explains. Take the exam first on your own before watching these step-by-step -step solutions. The link is in the description. Number one asks a bronsted lowry acid blank while a Lewis acid blank. We have these two different paradigms, the bronsted lowry definition and the Lewis definition, and we need to know that for bronsted lowry we're talking about transferring protons, while with Lewis we're talking about electrons. A bronsted lowry acid is one that donates protons, and a Lewis acid is one that accepts electrons. So this one is going to be option B. Remember, a bronsted lowry acid donates protons, a Lewis acid accepts electrons. Number two asks, what is the conjugate acid of H2O? In order to get the conjugate acid of something, we need to add a proton to it. H2O is going to act as a base and pick up a proton. We've got water acting as a base, meaning it accepts a proton. That is going to give us H3O plus. So we're going from H2O to H3O plus, where the positive charge is on the oxygen. In order to get the conjugate acid of something, you make it act as a base, and if something is acting as a base, it is accepting a proton, and then you just show the conjugate acid as being the thing after having added a proton to it. H2O becomes H3O plus, the hydronium ion. Number three asks, which is the strongest acid? When we're talking about acid strength, what we need to understand is that the strength of an acid is proportional to the stability of the conjugate base. That sounds like a lot, but what we really mean here is that the more stable the thing is that you get, the more readily the acid wants to donate the proton, meaning the stronger the acid is. So if we have HF, HCl, HBr, HI, what are the conjugate bases of these things? What are we going to get if these lose protons? HF becomes F minus. HCl becomes Cl minus. HBr becomes Br minus. And HI becomes I minus. So we get the halide ions. So now the question becomes, what is the relative stability of the halide ions that are being produced? Now, what is the trend we want to look at here? What we understand is that these are going down the periodic table getting larger, right? So fluoride is a certain size. Then the chloride is bigger than that. Bromide is bigger still. And then iodide is quite large. What we need to understand is that as the halide ions get larger, they become more stable because anytime you have a formal charge, the more that that can be diffused, the more that can be spread around in space, it becomes more stable. A larger volume can better accommodate a formal charge. Iodide is the most stable, then bromide, then chloride, then fluoride. Now, if iodide is the most stable halide ion, that means that HI must be the strongest of these acids. Because the thing that you get is the most stable option possible, HI will most readily lose the proton to produce the most stable iodide ion. Whereas going all the way down to the fluoride ion, the fluoride ion is the least stable, and so HF is actually not a strong acid. It's somewhat of a weak acid. It still can act as an acid, but because the fluoride ion is so much less stable than the iodide, HI is an extremely strong acid. It will very readily lose that proton because the thing that you get is so stable. That one's going to be HI. Okay, number four asks, which of the following is the strongest base? That means that we're looking at the ability of these compounds to accept a proton. In all of these cases, we're looking at some lone pairs on oxygen and nitrogen. So this oxygen has two lone pairs. This oxygen has two lone pairs. This nitrogen has one lone pair. And this nitrogen has one lone pair. In each case, an acid-base reaction is going to occur whereby either oxygen or nitrogen is accepting a proton with a lone pair. And so which is able to do it best? Now, what we have to understand is that these lone pairs are not all equally available for acid-base reactions. Some of them are tied up in resonance. So for example, over here on this phenol, we've got a lone pair that can get pushed down here, and then all of this pi electron density can be delocalized. We have a lot of different resonance structures, 
involved there, because that lone pair is tied up in resonance with the rest of the molecule, it is less available for accepting a proton, and therefore phenol will not be as good of a base as cyclohexanol. Likewise, we can say the same thing for aniline. This lone pair is tied up in resonance with the rest of this molecule. We can push that lone pair around. That lone pair is delocalized. If that lone pair is delocalized, that electron density is spread out around the molecule. It is less available for accepting protons. That is not the case over here. Over here, that lone pair is completely localized on the nitrogen atom. So that is going to be much better available for acid-base reactions and accepting a proton. So we know that it's not gonna be either of these. These are the ones where it's bad because of resonance. And so now all we're doing is we're comparing an oxygen atom and a nitrogen atom. And as it turns out, a nitrogen atom is a better base than an oxygen atom. It's better at accommodating another proton because N plus, what results, is more stable than O plus because of the higher electropositivity of nitrogen. Nitrogen is to the left of oxygen on the periodic table. It can better accommodate a positive charge. So we're going to go with D there. D is going to be the strongest base. Number five asks, which proton is most acidic? With this concept of strength of acidity, more acidic, less acidic, we're always looking at the stability of the conjugate base that is produced. So when we lose a proton, we're gonna have a minus charge. What happens to that minus charge? What kind of atom is it sitting on? Is it delocalized? how much is it delocalized? The more delocalized, the more stable that anion is going to be. All of these hydrogens are sitting on carbon atoms, so there's no difference there. We're comparing carbon ions, but then we're saying, is there any delocalization that can occur there? For example, if we're looking at this one over here, if we lose that proton, we're gonna have a minus charge on this carbon atom. There is a little bit of delocalization that can occur. We would be able to push that over here, and then this could be pushed up there. So there is some delocalization that could happen there. And we'll say that there is some delocalization for HD. Then let's look at HC. So over here, if we were to lose that, there's actually nowhere where that could go. We would have a minus charge right here, and that can't go anywhere. It's not in a conjugated position with respect to that pi bond. It's not adjacent. It's right on one of those carbons in that pi bond. So that one has nowhere to go. That's not a good one. We have no delocalization there. Now let's look at HA. If we were to, for example, take that one, then we could push this up here and we could get the oxy anion. So there would be some delocalization there. That's pretty good. Now let's look at HB. If we were to take one of these protons, we would be able to push this electron density over here and up into the carbonyl. We also could push this over here and push that minus charge onto that carbon over there. So we actually have quite a lot of delocalization. We have delocalization over a great portion of the molecule. Remember, the greater the degree of delocalization, the more stable that anionic species, and the more stable the resulting conjugate base, the more acidic the acid must have been. The more stable it is, the thing that you get, the more easily that that proton can be extracted in the first place, which correlates with acid strength. So HB is going to be the most acidic proton. These two, the two HBs together, are the most acidic protons on that molecule. Okay, number six asks, consider acids HX and HY. HX has a pKa of 11, while HY has a pKa of five. Which statement is necessarily true? So we're saying that HX has a pKa of 11, and that is going to go to form X minus.